All right, hello everybody, welcome back. It is another portfolio review. I said to you guys, I'm gonna try to do these every week and I've had about five flood in in the last few days. The demand is absolutely insane for these right now. A lot of people are loving this series too and I can't really blame them. The main objective of this series is to promote transparency, something that I think is lacking amongst the finance YouTube community, but also get exposure to new investing strategies, stocks, and allow me to share any input on any holdings I'd like to see more or less of. I will never filter out anything unless you become a channel member or throw your money at me. That's the only way I can give you a perfect portfolio score. So over on the Discord, I had somebody by the name of Stone, and we're just going to say the first part of that name for now. He sent over his portfolio, his holdings, and his investing strategy, so I'll be going over all that today. But before we get into the video, once again, for any clarification, go over on my Twitter at Ryan Dengler Show or on the Discord link in the description. Message me from there your portfolio, goals, age, objectives, and all that good stuff that I like to know before I go over the holdings. Thank you. Check out the Due Dividend Stocks Not Drugs merchandise, and of course, roll the intro. Hello, I like money. All right, so he messaged me, and he said, just found your channel today from that portfolio review, and I thought he'd send me mine because it can get some clicks. And you guys already know, on this channel, we only do it for the money. I do not care about you guys whatsoever as the viewers. I only do this for money and personal gain. But besides that, the point, I don't really care on us. No holding back. Would love to hear anything you've got. I plan to be watching you for a while. So first of all, Stone, uh, Stone, uh, thank you for watching the channel very much. Greatly appreciate the support, as with all you guys. But don't think those kind words or your dirty name is going to get you anywhere when it comes to me saying good things about your portfolio. But to start off, he said that he's 20 years old and his investing goal is that it's long-term dividend investing with a couple high-risk plays. Hmm. This is also in his Roth IRA, so it's important to keep in mind he's not going to be taking out any of this money without penalty, of course, until 59 and a half years of age. But to start off on the overall topic of Roth IRAs versus IRAs, because I really don't get to talk about this a whole lot on the channel, overall, I think if you're young, I think it's important to not only have a Roth IRA, but also have a regular IRA. Um, me personally, at least I know, I want to have the money disposable in my 30s, in my 40s. That's my objective right now as of the recording of this video. So me personally investing into a Roth IRA at this point, unless it's going to be in an index fund, probably just VU at some point or SPY, it doesn't make much sense for me to put the entire portfolio into a Roth when I know I'm going to be using that money a lot quicker, as soon as maybe even five years. There's a lot of things I want to do with my dividends one day vacations, cocaine, and other worthwhile things that I plan to be using at least some of my dividend income for at some point possibly in my 20s and I'm still not 100% committal on that. As long as I can, I'm most likely going to reinvest the dividends because the long-term power of reinvesting your dividends, which I've talked about on this channel, I think is very solid. His portfolio value right now is $472.47. And now, I've said this recently in the videos, but I really don't care about the portfolio value. I really care more about the strategy and holdings. I've gone over portfolios that are worth $2.5 million, and I've gone over portfolios that are worth $50. I do not discriminate here on the channel, but to start off, his largest holding is Apple stock ticker AAPL at 17% of the portfolio. Now, 17% is a bit lofty when it comes to allocation. First off, I would assume a lot of this is in gains, but I also think Apple is one of the few companies in the world that I'm completely fine with that making a higher allocation. Apple is such a high-quality company. I just made a video on Apple stock. I highly recommend you go check it out. But essentially, I think Apple may actually may be near fair price right now. They grow their cash flows very well. Their buybacks are unprecedented. Their dividend growth is lackluster, but I think over a long-term time horizon, that dividend growth will pick up at some point. I don't know when, but at some point I think it will. Apple's brand is so strong. And Apple actually just announced today that they would be stopping their electric car projects that they were doing. I actually think this is a good thing from an investor perspective. The car business is not something that is really attractive when it comes to an investor perspective, but it was really interesting to see what they were going to potentially do with it. I love Apple as your top holding. I think it's such a strong company at the end of the day, and it's really just an amazing business. While we're on the topic of amazing businesses, this next company is definitely one, and it's of course Costco, stock ticker COST, coming in at 15.63% of the portfolio. Costco is another amazing business. Once again, the only thing bad I think about Costco stock is really the valuation. I remember when I first bought my Costco position this spring at $535 and I thought that was overpriced. Today, it's trading in the 700s and it doesn't appear to ever want to come down for Ryan. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't appear I'll ever get Costco at those low prices again, but if Costco were ever going a 5 or 10% dip, I would absolutely have to add more to my portfolio and my very small position. But I love Costco, and I think it's a really solid holding, especially at 15.6% of the portfolio. Next, it's the dividend ETF SCHD, coming at 13.84% of the portfolio. I think the SCHD disrespect as of lately has gotten a little out of control. I remember just nine months ago when SCHD was outperforming the S&P 500, all you guys were gassing it up. Just suddenly, because the S&P 500 jumps up a lot because of like five companies in it, now it's underperforming and none of you want to be part of it. I just think it's a little ironic. If I buy an asset to be a long-term holding and nothing changes with it and I still believe in it, I'm going to continue holding it. That's why I'm not selling my SCHD. But if the S&P 500 were ever crash or go into a bear market, SCHD would look like a gold mine once again. It's really recency bias with SCHD. The next holding is, of course, the restaurant chain, which has recently gone up a lot in price, which is Texas Roadhouse, stock ticker TXRH, which makes up 11.55% of the portfolio. Texas Roadhouse is a very simple business to understand. They're a restaurant that offers really quality service and affordable pricing. That's it. With that, they have really good brand, pricing power, and more. Unfortunately, in my portfolio, Texas Roadhouse is a much smaller holding. I only bought two shares, and it's currently worth $300. It's a smaller holding, and I'd like to add more. Unfortunately, I was stupid and didn't buy in the $90 range when everybody thought Ozempic was going to make them go bankrupt. I think it's a strong holding, and I don't love it. Maybe 11.55%, but I still think it's a really strong business regardless. Speaking of strong businesses, the next one probably isn't the strongest, but it's MPWs. Now, everybody knows my thoughts on MPW at this point, but I've actually lightened up a little bit. I'd recommend you check out our debate on the Cash Flow Kings live show. We are really in-depth and have a really solid conversation regarding MPW, but overall, it's just nothing for me. I think if you're investing in MPW for the dividend at this point, it's really not the way to go. I think there is a decent chance of recovery, but if you're buying MPW at this point, you're not buying for the crazy dividend yield. I understand this is one of those more speculative plays in your portfolio. I'm just personally not a huge fan. I think the money could be better allocated elsewhere and start your compounding, especially since you're 20. So obviously, I don't love this holding. The next holding is SPHD, which makes up 8.31% of the portfolio. This is a high dividend, low volatility ETF, and I'm just not a fan of this. You're 20 years old, I think we have a lot of room for compounding, and I think just being, you know, afraid of volatility at this point, and sacrificing a lot of compounding in the process isn't the way to go. I'm not a fan of this holding. The next company is Realty Not Reality Income, which makes up 8.29% of the portfolio. Now, Realty Income, I'll say this, I don't think it's the greatest REIT, but it's like plain chicken breast. As Matt the Dividend Profit put it, it's going to get the job done, you're going to get your protein, but I think there's just better options out there. I own Realty Income 9 Portfolio. I will say this right now with Realty Income and Vici. I think Vici offers more growth. There's less history. If you care about like dividend history and historicals and all that stuff, I don't think Vici is the way to go. I think there's more growth, and you also get that same yield with Vici. I'm just going to put that out there for now. But I think it would be stupid and foolish right now if you bought Realty Income in an earlier time like I did and intended to hold it for the long term to sell it now when interest rates are high. In fact, I'm even leaning to buy more if it goes into the $40 price range. If it got down to like $46, $45, I'd have to say yes. For me, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when Realty Income will go back up into the 60s, 70s, and 80s due to macroeconomic conditions It eventually will recover. I'll happily be paid to wait from Realty Income and get my monthly dividend from them. I just think it would be extremely foolish to sell at a time like this at losses at high interest rates and in macroeconomic conditions like this. Next, he owns Amazon, which makes up 6.81% of the portfolio. I think Amazon's a really, really strong company, but me personally, I'm already in Microsoft when it comes to cloud, and Amazon actually kind of contradicts some of my other holdings in the portfolio, not that I'm like morally against that, whatever, but Kroger and Target, Amazon really is competing with those two, so I think it would be irresponsible for me as a proud Kroger and Target shareholder, real AI companies there, to buy Amazon. And also, Amazon's just never really been on my watch list, so I'd have to do more due diligence on the company. Next, he owns Tesla, which makes up 6.06% of the portfolio. Honestly, I really haven't covered Tesla much on the channel. I think it's a decent company for sure. I haven't done a lot of due diligence on it. I'm going to be completely honest. I think it's a solid holding, though. I think Elon Musk, though, is a CEO. If I were a shareholder, I'm not 100% trustworthy in him as maybe a person outside of the CEO job. I think the guy's an absolute genius, but I also think he has the capability of really sending things south very fast. That's the trade-off with having a genius like Elon Musk as your CEO, though. And lastly, Vu makes up 3.36% of the portfolio. All right, I have some critiques to make here. I'm struggling to find like a main direction of the portfolio. 
It's just really confusing when you have companies like Tesla and MPW in the same portfolio. It's honestly a little wild. I would consider selling out a realty income at some point and putting in Avicii. I obviously don't understand your cost basis on that. I think that's overall just a portfolio upgrade from going to realty income to Vici and you're not sacrificing any yield in the process. I don't know your cost basis with MPW either, but I'm assuming you're flat. I'd say put the MPW into VU and just dollar cost average into it over time. I just really don't think that MPW at your age and your circumstances and the amount is your portfolio is worth it just doesn't really make sense in my opinion so me personally the holdings that i would consider selling in the portfolio just for circumstantial reasons mpw sphd maybe realty income i really don't know your circumstances on that and i'd allocate that into vu and maybe another etf i think there are some really solid holdings in this portfolio but it's just an overall mix and i don't see a general direction into it all right thank you to stone lock uh, for sending in your portfolio I also want to thank you, the viewer, for making the video. It greatly means a lot to me, truthfully. Thank you guys for watching. Check out the Do Dividend Socks on Drugs merchandise, the best-looking merchandise for any dividend investor. And, of course, smash the like button, subscribe, and Do Dividend Socks on Drugs. Have a good one.